Ladies and gentlemen, we are now here ready to get into the grand finals of the Arctic Gaming Experience. It is wonderful to hear all of you guys in the crowd cheer and all of the people watching from home. Let's see us cheer. Let's see you cheer in the chat as well. Virtual, what is in front of us now? What's in front of us now is, well, four incredible players that are preparing, getting ready. And I thought we might want to take a little bit of a look back at the tournament before we get into their match to see how they all got here. Absolutely. We can actually take a look at the time attack seating that the players, they drove. If we take a look here, we can see Carl Jr., one of the players that is in the grand finals, also showed up in the time attack seating, getting the top seed with a 2 minute 59 point 619, just seven hundredths of a second ahead of second place. Yeah, and you see Pac, who's now also in the grand final there. You see Tween there, and you see actually Tween listed twice, which I believe the other one is supposed to be Vinx. So, uh, but they all four did really well in the seating. Then let's take a look at the group stage, where we of course know Carl Jr. and Tween went undefeated. 16 points out of 16 possible, but you also see Pac and uh, Binks up there <laughs> with 14 points. The crazy thing about Carl and Tween is not only did they go four for four in the group stage, they won every single one of their matches. Also in the semifinals, they were the first person to, f to finish. Yep. They both were the first people to qualify for the grand finals. They have been on top of the game every single game. But I think they really got rattled a bit in both their semis. I mean, Tween was put up for a fantastic match from Mossa, Coco, and Pac, really showing like they were at his level and Binks there leading over Carl Jr. by 20 points. There's no one that does that. That is one of the crazy hit, like one of the crazy storylines in my mind is just how much Binks is showing up right now, being one of the uh, uh, people with the least experience on a LAN event like this and still shows up to this degree. He really does and I think everyone now has been amazed by just what he can accomplish. So excited to see what he can do in you know the next 10 years I'm sure. He oh has yeah he's only 19 years only old. 19. He has so much of the Trackmania career left ahead of him. So they will soon be joining us here on stage and since we are a bit ahead of schedule we're gonna get to get a bit more into their head before the Grand Finals get to hear their thoughts and we're gonna to start Bringing the players up on stage now, but first, Mele, are you ready? Yeah! Is that a yes? I think, I think that was a yes, but I, I'm not quite sure if I could hear it. Are you ready? Yeah! Uh, that's, so, that's starting to sound like a yes, Jake. Uh, that's, a, that's a yes. I think that's a yes. That's good job. So good job. let's begin by bringing up the first player coming through from Canada, Carl Jr. So, Carl, you are obviously one of the greatest of all times to ever do it. Now, what we've been talking about is that you are probably the player with the most experience in a grand finals like this. Do you think that gives you a little bit of a competitive advantage over your opponents? I don't think it does anything. They are too good uh, for that. So, <laughs> we'll see and uh, we'll have a really great final. Yeah. I now, for this tournament specifically, I mean, you've basically won all there is to win with five world championships with uh, five Serrero Cups, but considering the uh, reception of this event, it could be a staple in the world. And how, do, how would it feel to win the first Arctic Gaming experience? It, it wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't <laughs> hurt. <laughs> also, quick question. I know you don't have to answer this, but in case, what is the prize pool going to go to? Uh, <laughs> that, that, that's a question to, that, that's a hard question right now, but uh, I'll save my money. Kids, you should save your money. <laughs> <laughs> Some wise words from a wise man, Carl. We will disturb you no further. Feel uh, free to have your spot and get ready for the grand finals. Yes, next up we have the next player that has won every single one of the rounds. Everybody give a warm welcome to Tween!
you can hold this one. So, Tween, you're also the only other person that's won every single one of the rounds going in here undefeated. How do you feel about the finals? Um, like, I, I just have to push my absolute best, and uh, that's what I'm going to try to do, and yeah. <laughs> Is there any map in the map pack you're looking the most forward to in this grand final? Most likely Bodo. I think that on that map, like, uh, everyone performed so nice in the semifinals, and it's just going to be a nice show. A and nice show, we like to hear that. Oh, 100%. And one more thing, like, what would winning the Arctic Gaming Experience here mean for you? Oh, it would be huge. Like, uh, I loved every single moment I had with this tournament, and I'm just going to try to cap it off nicely somehow, and uh, it will be huge. And uh, thank you very much for your support, guys. A warm applause for Tween here. Please have your seat and get ready for the match. The next player we want to bring up to the stage after winning in the first semifinal and clutching it out in that double final situation, please give a warm welcome to Pac. Now, Pac, that first semifinal was quite the affair. Have you had time to catch your breath and prepare for this final? Not really. I mean, that's just <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, I watched the second one. That level was a joke. I mean, I don't know what I'm coming into. I'm just, I'm here to have fun and ha have a great final. Agreed. I, uh, I hear you talk a little bit about that second semifinal. Did you see Binks's pace? What do you think about your competition right now? I mean, it's terrifying, isn't it? I mean, he is <laughs> unbelievable. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just give it my all and we'll see what happens. Yeah, Absolutely. and is there anything more you want to say to the fans before we start? Just thank you everyone for your support and making this tournament such a good event. So, yeah, thank you. All right. One more time, have your seat for the final time. Let's see how it goes. And then we have the youngest player to enter the stage, the 19-year-old, the person with incredible pace here a second ago. Everybody welcome in Binks! We're gonna hold this for us. Yes, so you can hear everybody is cheering for you. You seem to be showing up just tremendously well. What would this mean for your career if you won the Arctic Gaming uh, Tournament? Uh, for, for my career level, it's insane. I played before just my, be my best match ever. Okay. So I'm really happy. And now I will try to, to, to confirm that in final. Yeah, in the summer there, at one point, you were leading over Carl Jr. By, over 20, by 20 points, which is not something that many players can do. You will have to do it once more here in the final. And which map is, are you most looking forward to where you think you can do just that? Uh, I think it's uh, Arctic. Arctic? Yeah. yeah. I think Arctic is a good call. It's also one of the difficult ones. Is it the ice slide that's yeah. doing it for yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah, it is definitely. Also, just one more question. How are the nerves right now? It's, uh, I was more nervous in the semi-final. Semi oh, okay, yeah. why? Like now, I just want to, to play my best and maybe win, maybe? And that's a great mindset. Give it I up for the experience. Thanks, have your seat. I think I am more nervous than the players. It I am. Like. Yeah, I can. I'm shaking here, and the players, they are so cool just being like, ah, it's not a problem. Let's win this. But they have to be. We have to be excited. Crowd, are you excited? Yeah! And I think we shall wait no longer. Now, I think we should go right into it and start this grand finals. Let's begin the finals of the Arctic Gaming Experience 2022 and find out who wins the six thousand dollars at the top of the prize pool. Here we go. Okay, so we heard Bings here right now talking about that ice slide on Arctic. Um, we've seen people make mistakes there, not only the pros, but also on the B maps where the 
the youths played and the streamers played. We've seen ice slides go wrong. We've seen people take in that inside snow. I think it's a very good map to capitalize on. It is, and I think he likes the outside lines and the dirt, the, the drifts. It's a nice combo that lines up for him. We heard also it was uh, Tween talked about Buda being one of the maps he was looking forward to. And then Pack and Carl, we didn't ask them about a specific map, but looking at the, their play style and their history, I think Carl really thrives on maps like Nulam and Mele. We saw that difficult map pay off. And then Pack, you have to look at like where can he perhaps beat the others. He had some great rounds and especially winning on the map of the Classic, also on Nulam was where he yeah, came through. Yeah, and I think Pag is one of those players that is really good at clutching it out when it matters. You know what I mean? That's what he did to get into this Grand Finals. He clutched out the very ending, getting that uh, finalist position over with as the second person. And I think that's, you know, this Grand Finals is where you need to do that once again. And like one thing is how they're going to do it, but there's so much at play historically also in this Grand Finals. So many things that, you know, we get to see now, will Carl Jr. solidify his dominance on top of the Trickmania eSports scene after winning the World Championship? Can he get this tournament too? His legacy is already crazy and the accolades he's ranked up, but I think he still wants to prove to the young kids on the block that, yeah, I'm still the best around you, you know? Absolutely. Like, to solidify yourself as the best player over and over again, that's definitely something. But to come in, for example, for Bings, a 19-year-old, kick starting a career that hard with a, a win here would be huge. And then you think about Tween, right? Tween has kind of been the unlucky second in Trackmania history. He has six World Championship finals on his record. And four times he got second place, two times he got third place, but he's never actually won the tournament. The biggest win he has is at Gamers Assembly, a tech tournament, but this would certainly be a lot bigger. It could be his, the win of his career. Definitely. And, you know, Tween also has shown us that he has the pace to definitely win this one right here, winning every single match he's been in so far. And then you think about Pac, who his most recent big win was his win of Trackmania Grand League, but that was in a season where Carl Jr. was not playing as much. And a lot of people were discrediting that when saying, you know, could he have done this if Carl was playing at his best? Well, now he gets a chance to go up against Carl, having trained a lot, and in the grand final, this is a moment to try to beat Carl and the others and show I'm the best when everyone is at their best. Absolutely, and arguably, you could say that in this tournament, the players are training even harder. Also, doing during uh, due to the prize pool being a incredible prize pool set up from the sponsors. So I think we're going to be able to see some of the best gameplay that's ever been shown in Trackmania. We are, and we are about to get ready. We have loaded onto the server now with the first map. So let's get the gameplay up on the screen. They are warming up on the Buddha, and the map is the one Tween was looking forward to, the one with the quarter pipe jumps, and especially that ending. I think we're in for some nice rounds. Oh, definitely. Buddha is, as I've said, my favorite map of the map pack right here. It is one of the unique ones. It has quarter pipe jumps, it has an engine off section, it has a risky finish that's actually a really risky finish that you can push as hard as you want. Like, this map has the... the you know, it has the ingredients to make it something special. It really does. And this is one way to kickstart a grand final. It's not an easy map to start. We saw it with the pressure one in the semifinal, number two, how everyone made a mistake in that high pressure round, except for, of course, Jackson exactly. made it through. So warm up is ended. Let's hear it. The grand finals. <laughs> Into the first round. Starting off. The players are, of course, going to be very, very close to each other as they've all been practicing for a long time for this moment right here. Binks currently in the back. The rest of the players getting a little bit of a lead, about one car length, but everybody entering the engine off section with approximately the same speed. This is where we saw Tween get ahead, though, last time. Yeah, Tween tends to have better starts because of that wide approach for the engine off part and then the quarter pipe jump across. They all actually nail it here. Tween said he was looking forward to this. Let's see what he can make of it now that it's here on stage. Carl Jr. right there with him on the dirt jump, but he's going to go a bit sideways here to try to land earlier, and that gives him a car length of a lead as he goes into the dirt downhill. The first 10-pointer is looking like it could be up for grabs for him if he gets this last drift and the jump right. Is Tween going to start with a 10, or is Carl going to snipe it? Ooh! Carl with a perfect jump, taking that win, and Tween gets third. Tween, unfortunately, 
jumped out of that quarter pipe just a little bit too soon. So he didn't jump out when he was on a, a full vertical wall. He jumped out a little bit before, and unfortunately, he did not have the trajectory to go into the finish. Now this, if I were the other players here, I'd be scared, because if Carl Jr. starts with a win, he tends to make that into four wins, into five wins. And we saw on the group stage, yeah. seven wins in a row. When Carl Jr. gets into that zone, it can be so hard to stop him. Even though you're driving fast in the matches prior, this is where you have to really get uh, a stop to that momentum because he's building it right now. Yeah, Carl is a force to be reckoned with once he gets going. So it is important for the other players to try to see if they can deny that from happening immediately. And right now, Pag is the one that's closest to it, but he did not get that drift that well. So he ate a lot off the penalty grass, losing him some of that speed. But Binks now trying to close in the gap here for Carl. But it's going to be down to the last jump right now. Carl setting up for the right hander, going oh, really close, and he makes a mistake. And now Tween takes that lead. Pag is Does right behind anywhere? him. Anyway, it's the last jump that decides everything. Pink tries to go oh over, Pack takes God. it! What a round that is in the wake of Carl's mistake. Pack winning it by just two three hundreds against the other players. That was incredibly close right there. And that just goes to show that some of the pressure is still there. You know you're point two ahead or point one ahead, but you cannot slow down. And that balances the match a little bit. It will not be the Carl sweep that we've seen sometimes happen where he starts with win after win. It's going to be close affair, but Carl is right up there now again before that freewheeling. But look here, Tween and Binks, both proponents of that wide line, catching up to Carl and Pack across this stretch here as they have more speed to work with and a great start for Tween. He is a tenth ahead already. Absolutely, if you can get a low line right here, he will extend his lead even further. Binks going a little bit further up the wall. That's going to push him down into fourth place, but Binks uh, can still get back here. Tween and Carl Jr., though, all the way up in the lead. Carl Jr. getting a little bit more speed, and he's going to try to overtake, but he hits the outside wall, and now once again it's going to be Pack or Tween that's going to take it home. Is it going to be one or the other? Pack almost crashing right there. He's going to have a little bit less speed. Tween needs a good final jump right here. Is he going to be able to Get it, Pack trying to overtake, but Tween makes it. Tween gets it, Pack was so close to having the perfect jump, but he slightly crashed into the inner corner of the finish. Didn't get a clean swoop through, and that is why Tween wins that one. And they're trading back and forth, they've all picked up a couple of wins. They have, but Pack uh, currently has gotten out in front and is now on 22 points. Tween on 18, Carl Jr. on 17, and Binks on 12. It's a very tight race. Yeah, Binks the only player so far that hasn't gotten a 10-pointer, but he's been close. He's had some great showings here already. Good speed onto the freewheeling. Ken approached that with a very inside line, but the risks they're taking are inhuman right now, going so close to every wall. Binks will slowly get up into first there, and now the quarter pipe jump. Does he get the landing right? Tends to jump a bit higher up to carry more speed across this platform, and it balances out here as they get to the top of the hill. Yeah, and Carl Jr. is now going to be in the lead, but Pack is really trying to push it. Here in the end is where Pack has gotten a lot of speed. Bing's jumping really far. Is that going to set him up for a more inside turn? It could, and now it's going to be all down to the final jump. Oh, look at the gaps. It's nothing. This could go anyone's way. Carl Jr. has a small lead to work with, but that's nothing before the jump. Will Binks be able to snipe it away here? Will Pack maybe oh, take it? Pack, Pack takes, takes it! it. How did he snipe that? I didn't even see him jump in front of him there. He jumped far, both Carl and Binks with the inside corner. Ooh. Another win for Pack, 32 points there on Buda. It's been a great map for him, and they still have one more round to be played. That is an incredible start coming in from Pack right now. Like, that is more than he could hope for, I think. Getting 10 points ahead of all of his opponents, now he just needs to maintain that pace. Oh, the wide line from Binks should put him far ahead of the others. That was a good start. Carl Jr. and Tween able to keep up close, but that pace he's driving is super fast here on the checkpoint. We'll see the quarter pipe jump now as they all set it up, trying to go as low as possible. Oh. Carl with a perfect jump there. Can't ask for anything more, and he will take the lead with that. But everyone is right there to challenge for it. We will have a spectacle for the last round here. Tween going for the low jump, trying to catch up. Will go up into second with that. But the wide line puts him back into fourth, and all four players can take this. Oh, but Binks makes a mistake, and now it's Pack and Carl Jr. alone in the lead. There's only one more drift than the jump setup to see who's going to win it. Is it going to be Carl Jr.? He goes for a low line, but Carl, Carl Jr. makes it. Half a hundred, five thousands in favor of Carl. The players can't even believe what they're seeing here. Incredible stuff to start off the finals. 
What an amazing start on Bode, and it's just going to get better and better from here. Pack there, 38 points, Carl, 31, and then we had 25, I believe it was, for Tween, and 21 for Binks. But now we go on to Salmon, a map that really favors Tween. His pace here has been mm. spectacular. Binks has been very consistent as well. This is a raw pace affair, though. There's not that many tricks on this. It's mostly about your transitions, about your speed preservation. Yeah. And these four are masters of that art, so yeah. Absolutely. And I just have one question for you, Virtual. How do you pronounce this map? This map? Mm -hmm. Salmon, with a thick L in the middle. <laughs> a thick L? <laughs> no, I, I mean, I don't know about that. I don't take that many L's, so I just say salmon, but that's fine, you know? Yeah, it, I'm going to add an extra L in there. Okay, but, <laughs> <laughs> but here we I'll take it. I'll take the L on that but as we see the warm-up. As we see the warm-up, the players are getting ready to show us another incredible match right here. We have the outside line coming in on the dirt sections. We have all the transitions that are coming in here on Salmon and the ending with the final jump where you need to get the exit speed. You do, and you'll see the different setups here. Some players want to go very close to the left around this corner to go high up on the platform and then drift in. And that gives them a bit more speed to work with, and they need it because this last jump, just look how close Pac's wheels are to the platform. It's barely possible to get there. And Pac actually chooses to uh, not finish the run, but you'll see Binks go for it here as well in the warm-up. Just, you got to get enough speed to... Barely. I get that jump right. I, I get where the players are coming from. If I had a bad line and I got into some bad muscle memory, I would also just DNF the warm up and just get back into a new round once the actual rounds start. Starting on map number two, what an amazing map one. Let's hope for a great map two here as we get into it. Carl Jr. there with an early mistake though. So it's a three player battle off the kickoff. Absolutely here. We did see Binks have a lot of momentum and a lot of pace here on this map as we see him go into first place ahead of Tween Pack getting a lot of exit speed, jumping up into that second place. Now for a really tight right-handed drift. Tween going with a really oh, aggressive Binks line. And Binks did hit the inside wall there, going just a little bit too tight. And now it's gonna be between Pack and Tween. And for Pack, this is a huge opportunity to take the reins on the match. Keep in mind Carl Jr., his closest opponent, is in last right now. If those positions remain and Pax get a 10 here, he'll be far ahead of everyone else. Tween, this is one of his best maps. Although he did good on Buda, this is a place where he can gain even more points. Great run so far. Up the last corner now. Pack going wider on the platform to get more speed. Tween's going to try to hold on to this lead, but Pack is getting there. It's a car length lead. Tween holds and takes the 10 points. Tween gets an important 10 points, but also Pack gets the second, he's so consistent in getting these first and second places, he keeps gaining that point advantage. Always and now, near the top of the scoreboard. Exactly, and now he also has an almost 10 point lead against that second place, and it's gonna be interesting to see if Pac can maintain the momentum that he's currently holding, because that would be huge. And that is such a confidence boost there for Tween as well. He had a win on Buda, but one more here will do nicely to set up for the next four rounds of this map. This could be the tournament he's been waiting for, but for Binks as well, it's a wake-up call that now he really got to keep up with his opponents. It's going to be tough. There's his toughest opponents yet, but look at the lines he's driving. Great exit speed there. He holds the lead against three of the world's best track mania players that have been around for the past decade, and right now he's leading this round against them. But once again, Pack actually pushes himself back up right next to Binks, and now it's a very, very tight fight to see who can get it. Carl Jr. also pushing up, but Binks extending his lead. He's now all alone, about three car lengths ahead of everybody else, and now he only needs a couple of more right-handers. Let's see if he can get the sausage turned down. Yes, he can. He sets up for the turn. Carl Jr. losing a little bit of exit speed, but Pack getting really, really close. Can Binks clutch it out here in the ending? He only needs one more jump. Will he clip or will he not? He makes it! He makes it. What an incredible time that is as well. 10549. That's a tenth off of the world record in the grand finals. That is incredible. And that's what we've been seeing uh, from Binks. He has been having insane pace these last couple of rounds. And that 10 points is so good because look at it now. It doesn't look that bad anymore. 35 to the 38 points of Tween and Carl. And Pack is right there, only 15 points ahead at 50. So he has made the comeback look more. 
possible now and you can keep that momentum going into round number three. Absolutely. Now the players, they are trying to push every single corner as we go into this right hander. You can see just how close Carl Jr. is to getting this airtime, but he maintains the ground contact, maintains the acceleration. Binks is right behind. He's going to try to go for a really outside to inside line here, making sure he gets all the exit speed as he can as we get into the dirt section. Here, you want to just get a lot of extra speed on the wide line, packing that turn really nicely, catching up a little bit, but also having to go wider for the platform, and Carl and Binks are going to extend ahead ever so slightly into the drift now. Binks challenging the five-time world champion in these slides. He's keeping up step by step. Pack hits the wall, will drop down. It's a battle between Binks and Carl to win this round. Binks with more speed up the hill, and Binks is going to hold that lead. Will Carl make the end jump? Carl gets there too, but 10 points for Binks, he's right back in it. Binks has now crawled his way back up to, I believe, second place, right behind Pack. He's gonna be one point ahead of Carl, four points ahead of Tween. Such a close start to this final. Only 13 points separating all of the players. This could, this could turn around very quickly. I mean, every round we start, I feel like anyone has an equal chance of winning it, and they just trade back and forth. Oh, and Carl getting a small bump there. Something we haven't seen in the group state is very rare and not what he wants right now in an that important is, round. That is unfortunate, but as we know, Carl Jr. is the man to put it back when he needs to. He will come back with the mindset, but right now we're going to see Pac, Tween, and Binks fight it out here. Tween with an opportunity now, has gotten a great start in the previous rounds, he's been third or fourth here now, up to second, just a car length away from Pack. but Binks, he has had great ending turns, goes on the inside line there, will hit a small bump and get less speed, so the difference remains, into the drift here, Tween carrying a lot of speed, that's going to extend him in first place, very good opportunity to seize 10 points here, Pack and Binks trailing though, they're just waiting for a really slight mistake to overtake him here, Binks looking for second up the hill, could they overtake him, could they get first, oh! Binks unfortunately clipping that last block once again, giving Pack the opportunity to take home second place, that's 6 points, and Tween getting that 10 points, and now, we are once again getting really, really close between the players. Pack exactly hitting 60 points. That is halfway to the mark, to reaching 120 and going to finalist. And he's done so with a small, small lead against the others. His About one round, round lead. He has diminished his lead a little bit throughout Salmon, but he has maintained it, which is the important part, because this is the last round of this map. And then afterwards, hopefully, he has once again gotten the pace to get that first place consistently. Oh, this is the closest start we've had yet. All four players got through the opening drifts and here they're all going Ooh. in as we see Binks into the wall, trying to commit for a bit too much, but you really have to, you can't afford to slow down. They're driving 105.7, 0.6, 0 0.5 as the winning pace. They know they need to go all in for these and Carl Jr. after that small bump, which he really couldn't do anything about, he's looking for revenge right now. He wants these last 10 points. Absolutely, and that's what we're talking about. Carl Jr. bounces back just like that. Nothing takes him off his mental game, and currently he is on first place. Can he take it home here on the last right-hander? Pack is really trying to push it. Is he going to have enough speed to overtake? It does look like he has enough speed, and Pack will snipe the 10 points. Pack holding so strong in the end there. A 105.56 is incredible. And Tween getting third with a 66, you don't see that too often. Amazing stuff here, and Pac extends his lead in the grand final. Absolutely, 70 points down to 55 on second place. As we head into the next map, I think Pac is actually showing some really, really good colors on these maps. Like, that is impressive gameplay from Pac. It really is, and he said the times they're driving is ridiculous, but his own times are exactly. ridiculous. Exactly, like he's doing he's so He's right well. there with them. Oh, he's not just right there with them, he's in front of them. You said it, Bastianic. Here we go on to Melee, the most difficult map in the map pack, a map that Carl Jr. and Binks tend to thrive on, but one where Tween and Pac can also certainly, you know, so do really well. This is where I would DNF for Pac, right? Because currently he's driving so, he's getting such a different line that he, he gets back is. in the trajectory here. He, he will get back to the speed. But at that point, you know, some of the players, they will opt for just DNFing, making sure that they don't get the different uh, muscle memory or all that jazz. But Binks and Carl Jr., as you just said, are driving the map to perfection right now. 
They really, really do well in these difficult, oh. difficult maps. But it's a bit interesting what a warm up can do for you. If it's bad omens or good omens, you know? Yeah. If you drive and you get a mistake in the warm up, you're like, oh, I don't want that to happen in the round. But some players also think, you know, okay, fine, I made that mistake. Now I know at least I'm not going to lose points. I mean, with it. I don't know about you, but I think I've driven most of my personal bests in warm ups. Uh, yep, that, that <laughs> tends to happen. The first warm up after Cup of the Day qualifier, yep, you just, just turn into a god. Yeah, I mean, and there's just something about it, right? <laughs> Honestly, I want my time to be set there. I want all of the Cup of the Day qualifier to not be there, and then the warm up is going to be the one time that yeah, counts. Yeah, and that's because you relieve the pressure, but Absolutely. now the pressure is right back on. You gotta be able to handle the heat as we are in the Grand Finals. Map 3 starting on Melee and the Arctic Gaming Experience. One more time for the players. Let's hear it. And the players are really close to each other, all setting up for a perfect left-hander. Everybody threading the Ooh. needle right there. Cole Jr. is in the lead. Base getting a lot of exit speed. Jumps up from fourth to second, but Pack is also up there to fight for it. Cole Jr. going a little wider, but he has more speed. And once again, they're neck and neck. Great drop down by all three players. Here is where we see some rounds decided. This downhill is deadly. You want to avoid the signs. You got to thread the car in between. One falls. Packs out of the race here. Carl Jr. now up in the clear lead as Sphinx is trying to make something happen in this ending. Going wide on the dirt, carrying a lot of speed. Carl Jr. slowly losing ground, but will he have enough for the last jump here? Landing on the platform, he takes it. He does take it home and pack gets fourth right now, so the other players are able to sneak in a little bit closer to pack. That will equalize the match a lot on the scores here. We will see it 73-63, 59-58. Yes, but pack still has a 10-point lead down to second place, still a very comfortable spot to be in, but he cannot afford to slow down right here. And we talked about it. We heard Binks' favorite map in this map pack was Arctic. It's coming up later. He gets a little bit of a rough start there, but... That's what we're talking about. Maybe Pax had his best two maps first, and now he has to oh, hold it against the others on some of his weaker ones. But Carl Jr. makes a mistake here, and it's three players left. It is three players left indeed, and Pack is the one of them in the lead. Bing's trying to attack, getting a little bit less speed due to an inside line that he took. Tween also going very, very inside, which is going to allow Bing's to overtake, but Pack maintains the lead. Tween trying to push it. They're going to be neck and neck once again. We're getting into the final left-hander. Is Tween going to maintain the lead? Is Pack going to come back? Bing's coming back. Who's going to be happy to have the most extra speed right here? It's three people against each other. Who's going to take it? Tween is going to be in front. Pack is going to attack. Who's going to have Pack makes a mistake, Bings gets second, Twin gets first. Insane round there, all the way up to the line. Will that be third for Carl? Looks like Pack still has it. Can Carl finish? Oh, Carl barely finishes, one second left. And we get a small time to catch our breath here, but 10 points for Tween makes him go up into second. Basically winning a round here can make you go from last to first almost. It's that close. It is in incredibly close right now, but Pack is still showing that he has the potential to get home these 10-pointers on this map, which is crucial for him right now. This is one of the most difficult, if not the dif most difficult map in the entire map pack, and playing against people like Carl Jr. on this map, which have so many technical experiences in the, in the game, is it has to be so difficult. Yeah, I can't even imagine Binks gets a small clip. Does he make the next jump? No, that's gonna cost him. That's a small clip there. Now Pack in the lead once again. Could get another 10 points here. Carl maybe a little bit far to make anything happen. Between us right there. More speed before the down. He'll need to keep the grip now and avoid those signs. Inside line for Queen as he overtakes Pack here. But more speed up the hill. It's going to be very close for the last line. Tween with a better approach. More speed towards the jump. It should be a hiss. Round to right. If he can get that last jump in. Tween. Two 10 points in a row. A back-to-back -back victory for Tween, and he is getting dangerously close to Pack right now. They are both currently ahead of the current world champion in this tournament. That is the level they're playing at. Absolutely. This is incredible gameplay, and once again, all the players are very, very close to each other. The difference between Binks and Pack is not that many points, and it's mostly down to having just a few unlucky mistakes. And this tournament has been amazing so far, but one thing that the players talked about is like, all we need now to make it perfect is the quadruple finalists. And the way they're playing, the way they're trading around back and forth, it could really realistically happen. They it are could. all going up there towards that 120 mark rapidly. Just look at this round, for example. Try to 
predict who's going to win it. It's not that easy. Everyone wants it as much, and they're all here to play for a tween, though, with a small lead against the others as we go into the second half here. Tween does something right there, which gives him so much speed, but Binks also executed it perfectly, and he's now going to be in the lead. There are four players so close to each other, it's all going to be down to the exit speed in the final jump. Binks is in the lead. Tween is trying to attack. He gets an inside line, almost taken it, but Binks takes it home. And that is a really fast time, 57.69. The best time we have, the world record, was set today, and it's a 56.58, a 57.58. So it's 11 hundredths away from the world's fastest time on this map. And now we have the final round of this map. And we have only one time here to see who will take the 10-pointer home in this final round of this map. Tween currently overtook Pac in the points. 85 points for Tween, 84 points for Pac. It's becoming a crucial moment right now. And 77 and 76, what a match this is. All for once going. Again, add it up the hill here onto the dirt. We'll see who has the best approach. Carl likes to go a bit wider here, catch the platform earlier and get more speed back for this next full speed part. And you can see him get right back up in there now. Pack losing grip in the uphill, going wide. Binks and Tween right ahead. And this is the part you said Tween gets it a little bit better sometimes on the inside line there. More speed than Binks. He will get closer, but so will Carl up the last hill before the last turn. Binks still in the lead. Carl's getting there. Tween's a mistake. Binks still with a small lead, but can Carl Jr. catch up here like he did in the semi-final? This time, Binks takes it home. And in an incredible turn of events, Carl Jr. is in last place in points. He is, but he gets more points than the others there. Just look at the scores. 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 7, 8, 2. That is insane. Everybody in the 80s range. We're going to 120. Whoever wins when they reach 120 is the Arctic Gaming Experience champion. We're going to Nurlan now as map number four. And we're ending on Arctic, one of uh, Binks' best maps. But he, right here, this is a huge map for Tween, Pack, and Carl. Yes. Binks as well can do well here, though. We've seen that in the semis. Carl had a fantastic showing in the first match of yesterday on this map. But then Binks beat him in the semis on and this map. And that's true. Binks actually outperformed Carl here in the semis. And it's going to be interesting to see if that's going to happen again. They and have. then we have, of course, Tween and Pack that also can show us just incredible pace. I think they're all going to go under one minute. You have to. You have to do that consistently here to get points, else you're just going to get last. It's crazy, but yeah. that's the level we're at. But as you guys can see, there are a lot of transitions here, for example, from dirt to road or from grass to road, where the players, they're going to sit up, set up some drifts in advance, making sure they get the lines here. Pack makes a small mistake. Don't worry, it is the warm-up, but they want to go low onto that plastic bowl to make sure that they get the best trajectory to get that exit speed. It's easy to get baited, but the orange timer, if you see it, then you know it's the worm up here. In a moment's notice, we're going to start, but also some warning signs there for Binks as he makes a small mistake on that last jump and wouldn't have made it to the risky finish. And that's true. Because you, so the, the thing about the risky finish is that the lower you jump, the more straight you jump into the finish. But it's also very risky because you can risk either hitting the outside wall or not even making it up to the finish. Here we go then, map four. Get some hype in the crowd. The players are giving their best for us. They and truly we, are. And we shall enjoy it while it lasts. Great lines for Binks there to take an early lead. Does he get this jump right? Oh, lands Ooh. on the road border, but it's enough to keep him in the race. And that's one strategy we talked about that does exist. If you dare to go for it here, finds himself in third just behind Tween and Pack. Did you see Pack's incredibly inside line on the ball there on the dirt? That pushed his car forward, gave him more momentum, and now he's two car lengths ahead. All he needs to do is get an inside line here on the plastic, get his car Binks jumping straight. Binks might be able to overtake, not quite enough to get up to oh, Pack. Binks has a lot All of speed. Oh, on the inside line, might get a bit closer. Pack still inherits the lead, though. And then that jump we talked about, Pack nails it perfectly, 59-85. That was a scary low jump coming in from Pack there. He almost had his back wheel clip the platform block. But he has just such a feeling for the car that he knows 
just about there is going to be enough, and it was. Another 10 points, takes back the lead in the match. 98 now out of the 120 he needs. That is incredible gameplay coming in from all of the players. You can see Bings there also going really wide, trying to make sure that he gets the most amount of space in the map to get that exit speed between. Oh, Could really mistake. make a mistake. Oh no, Bings going really low. Call Junior following up right behind. Pack is about 0.2 seconds behind the rest of the pack, but that is fine. He still has a chance to come back right now, but Bings and Call Junior really fighting for it. You said it last round, Pack does this section so well, and Pack is climbing right back up. Into that leading group, Binks though leading as we go into the plastic. This is where Binks found a lot of speed last round. Almost overtook Pac. Now he has to lead before that section. Carl Jr. is gonna try to get there. Pac's gonna try to get there, but Binks in a slight lead before the last drift. As we go onto the dirt now, Carl Jr. on an inside trajectory, trying to catch up, but Binks should still have this. Both Pac and Carl on an inside line. This could go anyone's way. Binks will take it. This is in. Incredible gameplay right now. Pack getting third, so he's gonna get four points. The other players are gonna catch up to him, and now Binks is in the lead. 103 points to Binks, 102 points to Pack. The two players to cross that 100 point barrier. In any other match, a 59.9 would be enough to win. It would be a dominating victory here. It's barely enough for third place. They are driving so fast right now and they really know they have to push it to another level to win these points. Binks in the lead, just 17 remaining to get to that 120 mark. So we go into the third round. Binks is in the lead, and he tries to maintain it, but Pack has a history of being very fast right here. Look at that line, he goes so aggressively inside, actually touching some of the penalty dirt, but it does not matter because it propels him ahead of the others, and now he's in the lead, tween almost jumping out of the map, Binks now trying to inherit that first place. Carl Jr. going so inside, almost flying out, but does it pay off? He has a little bit less speed. Binks is in the lead. Can Pack overtake here in the final couple of drifts before the last jumps here? Pack going more inside. Binks trying to get the exit speed. Who's going to have the lowest couple of jumps? Is it going to be Binks? Is it going to be Pack? Binks tries to get it and he gets it. Another win for Binks there. 10 extra important points as he puts himself within reach of reaching 120. Pack getting up to 108 now. And for Carl and Tween, this is getting very dangerous. The others are running away with it. And it's insane to see that Tween and Carl, the two players that's won every single one of their matches, even the semifinals, being the first players to qualify for this grand finals, are the two players in the back. Yeah, they are. And they were the undefeated players on day one. 16 out of 16 points in the group stage. Now they're given a proper challenge here by the others. It's again Binks leading here, but we're coming up to the section where Pack tends to gain a lot of time in this dirt part. Carries more speed onto it, that's one opponent. Now a more inside line here, perhaps in tween. And he might catch up to his second, and he will go into top two together with Binks, the leaders of the Ooh. overall match as well. Great line there for Pack once again, as Binks hits another bump. It's Pack in the lead this time, almost crashing on the inside. So close to the track limits, Carl Jr. following him every step of the way. Inside line for Carl, but Pack still has about a 200th lead to work with before the final corner. Will Pack take a 10 pointer here to put himself so close to finalist mode? Needs the jump and he gets it. Pack will be at 118. This is incredibly close. Pack takes back the lead with 118 point. Binks is gonna jump up to 117. This is incredibly close. Janik, we're guaranteed a double finalist. We're guaranteed Pack a double finalist. and Binks finalist. will both get their next round. If Carl or Tween wins this, they are also in range of finalists themselves. This is incredibly close. This might be the closest we could even hope for for a grand final. But I think Tween and Carl know they need to win this round to have a chance at the victory. It's oh, going to be very hard to hold off two finalists. But if they aren't within range themselves, they need to get there right now. As you see, Binks has had a bit of an unfortunate start. Three tenths behind gives Carl and Tween an opportunity. Which one of them will seize it right now? Pack is even there to challenge through the part where he does it really well. Catching up towards Tween up in this uphill. Trying to get more speed before that grass drop down. Carl on the inside line will take the lead. Now Tween left to fight for second as Pack goes on an inside trajectory. Any one of them can still take this round. Pack going a little bit more outside, trying to get the extra speed in on Carl. Goes for an inside line right here. Getting a little bit closer, but Carl going for an outside line. Getting more extra speed. Can he get the final two jumps right now? He does get a low jump and the second jump, and Carl takes a victory.
Carl, great run there. When it matters, the Clutch King performs. He gets to 112, but he still needs to win one round, deny the finalists, and then win himself. That's his way to the trophy. It is incredibly close right now, and this could be the final map. And let me remind you, we're going to Arctic. We're going to one of Banks' best maps. He's finalist yeah. right now in, as we speak. In the pre-match interview, this was the map that Binks said he was looking most forward towards. He did, and it, it shows in the stats too. He's played so consistently here, always driving mid 101s, his personal best in the low 101s. I think we'll see times around the 101.5 mark here if you're gonna win the rounds, but the players get this one very important warm-up to quickly catch their breath, try to calm their nerves, and then fully focus for the next seconds of driving, because that's gonna decide who wins Arctic Gaming Experience. Absolutely. Now, there's only one attempt if you're Pack and Binks that you have to get this down. Because if Pack wins, he will be the grand champion. If Binks wins, he will get the title. It, you only have, it, if it's any time to clutch it out, it is right now. I mean, just think about it how tantalizing it must be. You're right there. If this was the live round and Binks was here, he would be the champion, but it's just a warm up. He needs to do this next round when it counts. That's when he needs this performance. Oh, you can see, you can see, it's the nerves. Oh. I think the nerves are showing up right now. Both Pack and Binks must be sweating in their seats. This is not only the Final round maybe for them, but it's the final round against some of the biggest names in Trigmania. And in situations like these where experience comes through so much, when you know you've been in a situation like this and performed in the past, this is where Carl Jr. and Tween with their tournament lifestyle that can really come through. Their history, here we go, very important round. This is for the championship. This is indeed for the championship. It is now up to Tween and Carl Jr. to deny the two finalists to see just how much they can push out these rounds. Oh, Tween's Ooh, out. Tween. Tween is out. Carl Jr. is the last defense. If not, we will have our winner pack making a mistake too. And Carl right now with a one versus one could quickly become a finalist himself. It is Binks on his best map against the five-time world champion. There's one opponent in his way. If he beats him, then he is the Arctic Gaming Experience champion. Binks right now just needs to gain about two tenths of a second to Carl Jr. Going into the dirt uphill, he gets a really good line there. And it's now just one tenth remaining. Now, and if Binks can get a good right-hander after this, Grass section, he might be able to overtake Carl. He gets a little bit closer. Carl goes oh. out wide. Binks is trying to push it. Is he going to be able to do it? But Carl Seven denies. Seven of a second. But Carl Jr. defense is going to go to a triple final S situation. And Carl Jr. just won now. He has the momentum going into this triple finalist. He does. He knows he can do it. But I think Binks knows he can get that time too. This is important. He needs three in a row to win himself. Yes, I mean, this is incredibly difficult. Tween needs three. Oh, Carl's out! Carl <laughs> crashes. He needs to hope for Tween to win this. It's the only way he can win the championship. Right now, a golden opportunity for both Pack and Banks. They've been waiting for a moment. This is it. Can they capture it? Can they get past Tween and take the trophy for themselves? Up the quarter path jump we go. Bit of a quiet before the storm. Will they all land it? They all get up there. Thanks with a marginal lead onto the ice. Who's gonna get the best ice slide? This is gonna be so detrimental. Tween hits the snow, and now it's gonna be Binks and Cap. Who's gonna take home the victory? Who's gonna become the grand champion? Pack is in the lead. Binks is trying to push the exit speed. Only a few more drifts left. Pack is trying to push it as fast as he can, but Binks gets a little oh! bit closer, and Binks makes a mistake. Pack in a clear lead, only needs one more turn, and he is the champion. Give it Drop up for Pack! What an insane performance from the British player, getting a 101-49 to win the tournament. One of the fastest ones we've seen on Arctic all tournament long. And with that, he is now the champion of the Arctic Gaming Experience. Absolutely. I think we're going to have a quick round reset as Carl Jr.'s pad is not working. But congratulations to Pack.
I mean, he said it before the tournament, the time of driving is ridiculous. He started on Voda, winning round after round, and then he continued that performance on Salmon, on Mulan, and now also on Arctic. An insane round, and it's, I think, a relief for Pac to see that even after his 2016 World Championship and a bit of a slump, he can come back and he can beat the best. But we are not done yet. We're playing for second, third, and fourth, and that is still a very ongoing battle. Absolutely, Carl Jr. and Binks, both in finalists. Tween is there to try to deny them both. If Tween makes first place, he will put it into a triple finalist situation, and he's looking to do so. Well, going up the jump now, getting in early landing there, very important as he goes for the inside line down the hill. Has about a car length lead, but the ice slide will decide a lot here. Good exit speed for all of them. Tween carrying the grip. Binks does this uphill so well. Time after time. Ooh. Tween is out. Call is out. Binks, Binks in a clear lead. He could get second place here. Everyone else is out. Binks could get that second place for himself. And it looks like he's all alone over a half a second coming down to the next player. He's got to be his hand. Banks, 19 years old, getting second place in a big international tournament here, beating the likes of Tween, of Carl Jr. in the grand finals. He can be proud of today's performance. Absolutely incredible performance there coming in from Binks and from Pac. And now Carl Jr. is the only finalist left. Ooh. And Tween makes a mistake Ooh. from the very, very start. And Carl Jr. is now all alone for the rest of the map here. Almost two seconds ahead of Tween. And now he just needs to clutch out the rest. This could be the third place for Carl Jr. Not the result he was hoping for. But what a match all of them played. I don't think he will complain, considering the level they are at right here. Can Carl Jr. though close out this third place and secure a spot on the podium? She goes through the ice slide now. Every single player has been playing out of their mind, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with getting uh, second, third, or fourth. It is incredible what these players are showing us, and they all deserve the best praise that you can ever give. One more time in the crowd, give it up for all the players in this final. This has been amazing. And Carl Jr. here, one turn remains, a jump onto the platform and into the finish. Third place for Carl. Carl Jr. That is the final for the ages. I don't even know what to say. It was incredible. I. And you can hear the crowd is going wild. Like, they, they are eating it up right now. Standing ovation for the players. Hugs all around. They know that was truly something special. It really, really was. That, that was such a hard-fought battle for Pac, but he cuts it out in the ending. And it really speaks to the level when no player can get a dominant lead. They follow each other all the way to 50 points, to 60, to 70, and up to 120. Yeah, and then the finalist, we had a triple finalist in the grand finals, dude. What is there even more to want? You couldn't expect more. The players are happy, let's take our stance. Ladies and gentlemen, please come up here with the winner, Pac, the Arctic Gaming Champion. Now, Pac, going into this grand final, you said the level of the others was absolutely ridiculous. You played pretty ridiculous yourself. How does it feel to win? I can't believe it. This is incredible. I mean, I've lost my voice from screaming. This is <laughs> crazy. I can't, I can't believe I've won. I, I, I just, the, the whole final was unbelievable. Binks, Carl, and Tween, they played insane. And just, I mean, what a final. What a final. What a final indeed. So, what about celebrating? Are you going to go out celebrating tonight then? I mean, I've got an early flight, but I mean, a, a few drinks at least, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I mean, some celebrations are needed after this. I mean, what a tournament. Absolutely so. Yeah, walk me through a bit of the experience. You're sitting in the final, you go into Arctic, triple finalist situation against players of this caliber. How do you pull out a 101.4 there in that final round? I guess it's all a flash, but how, does, how do you do it? I mean, I just tried to imagine myself Practicing, because uh, in practice I was okay, but every time in match, that that's not my map at all. It's it's, it's Carl's, it's Binks, it's Tween's. I mean, I, I, I it's not mine at all. It's the ice turn. I'm not good at ice. I mean, what what's happening? So yeah, no, I just I just 
fo fully focused into it and just tried to keep the one on my car. And you did. <laughs> yeah. And you absolutely yeah. did. I managed to finish it, yeah. And now I think there's somebody that really wants to talk to you, introducing Aire. First of all, I want to say that the most important part about Jackmania is to showcase the best players in the world. And I want to say a huge thanks to all the competitors for actually showcasing how fun Trackmania can be. So give Pack, give the rest a round of applause for this amazing match. <laughs> now I want all four finalists to get in front of the stage uh, and you will all receive an award. Uh, handing out the awards is a salmon to also each of you. Uh, to represent the salmon industry is Marte. She is working in the salmon industry and also a volunteer at this event. So please, Twin, receive a salmon. Your salmon. <laughs> and then the winning salmon is from Pack. <laughs> <laughs> and if you thought that we just give you fish here in Norway, we also hand out some medals and trophies like the traditional. And to hand out the medals is the mayor of Mele, one of the guys who made this possible, is Sigurd Sturmo. Twin, your medal. <laughs> Paul Jr. Binks. And the medal first for the winner of the Arctic Gaming Experience, Pack. Yeah. And now the trophy for the first time winner of the Arctic Gaming Experience, Pack. Yeah. Now. We all know it's not only these four players that came to Mele, explore this amazing place and give us an amazing show. We also have other competitors. So I want to wish all the players, the streamers, to welcome to the stage. Give them a round of applause. And now it's time to thank people. In February of 2021, I had a stupid idea. I thought it was not possible. I thought it would be shut down in the first meeting. But people here in Melo, they believed in me. People in this region believed in me. And then I said, okay, this is my chance to help out my hometown. So I wanna thank all our sponsors, all of our partners, the politicians who made it possible, the Czechmania players, the Czechmania streamers, the Czechmania commentators for believing in me. They travel for 30 hours, be here for one week, just because I said I want to do something for my hometown. But this is also something I want to thank that is maybe more importantly, and that helps my city most. 2022 is the year of the volunteers. I have been lucky to receive uh, attention and awards for my work, but I think I just stand in the spotlight and get more attention than I deserve. So I want to thank all the volunteers that made this event possible. Without them, this would not be possible. The players would not have enjoyed this as much as possible. So please, please, from the bottom of my heart, thank the volunteers.
And of course, for those who believe that this production was done by me, I have not done anything this week. I basically smiled, <laughs> said hello to people, and just been enjoying this as much as you have. So I want to thank the production crew that is coming from the west of Norway. I want to thank the people who have run this tournament professionally. It's coming from France. So give them also a round of applause. And now it's time to answer the question people have asked me the most. What is next for this event? I want us to calm down because during my car trip to this event, I had Am Angel, who is making all the graphics for this event. I drove with her to this venue. I said, what should I say? Because I was expecting to say sorry, because I failed. I talked two big words. But amazingly, it all worked out. I have now shown that it's possible to do eSport events, to do international events in small towns. Ernest is 1,500 people. We should not be able to do this, but we are. And then I want to say that this is just an example that you can do anything, anywhere, and you can, if you really want, help out the next generation. So now I want to say to all the people, to all the sponsors, to all the companies that said, Eric, do this one time. We will see if it's something we believe in, now I think you should believe in this. You have seen that the eSport players that are on this stage are not the stereotypes that you read in media. These are some of the nicest human beings I know. They have been the best to these kids. They have given out jerseys, selfies, anything. So if you think eSport is scary, well, this week has shown you that this is not scary. This is the future. This is what creates memory for these kids. So, I, in October of last year, once I announced it, I was speaking big words. I didn't have all the financial backing I had, but I said it would be possible. And if it was possible to get here today from that starting point, well, why not do it one more time? So I hope to see you in 2023. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Eric, I'm so proud of you. Uh, what you do, it's amazing. And what you do for the people who are here, for the children, and for me, it's amazing. I hope we can do this every year. And <laughs> I'm so, so proud, and you are the greatest man alive. Thank you, Eric. See you in 2023. Bye-bye.